This is the third in a series of videos on the film Mulholland Drive that is intended to provide an interpretive perspective that evolves from David Lynch's personal practice of transcendental meditation. The first two videos provided a basic outline that connects the film to meditation and some Eastern philosophical concepts that can serve as a basis to recognize the point of view this series is intended to describe. Concepts related to a perpetual cycle of desire leading to suffering and that our inner spiritual being is reality related to a perpetual cycle of desire leading to suffering and that our inner spiritual being is reality while the outer physical world can be related to deception and illusion. And the film is an abstract representation using characters interacting in an entirely non-physical mental landscape to represent mental actions occurring deep within the subconscious mind. Okay, this video will present the second clue Lynch provided in the DVD release. Notice appearances of the red lampshade. This clue can have lots going on. Appearances as a plural can suggest to direct us to both when we see it in the film as well as the physical appearance of what we see. Now as to the physical aspect, it is worth noting that the lamp base is the trunk of a tree which can suggest symbolically the tree of knowledge, which traditionally relates to a symbol of knowledge of good and evil. And it is also a light, which can suggest a symbol of illumination and enlightenment or knowledge versus ignorance. But here the light is dimmed by a red shade, which can be interpreted as a symbol that is casting a red glow, suggesting both a darkening of the pure light as well as connecting to the color red which in the film can be assigned a more negative meaning when connected with the, char the character Camilla. Red can have an association with things like emotion, fire, blood, passion, desire, and even lust, which from a meditative perspective can be imagined as being related to negativity. And when one looks at the composition of the red lampshade, we see it is on a table with a mosaic ashtray containing crushed cigarette butts. As an artistic composition, the ashtray is lit by the lamp, providing a focus and emphasis on the ashtray. And the mosaics can relate to the colors that the characters wear and suggest the distinct individual mental aspects each of the characters represent from this point of view. The mosaic also suggests an element that is in a sense used and abused with crushed discarded cigarette butts. When looking closely, a gold ring can be seen on the filter of the cigarette butts. And this is a sign used on the brand American Spirit Cigarettes. And the, the term American Spirit might symbolize a more Western view of the world as opposed to Eastern philosophy. An addiction to a desire that leads to suffering. In fact, the entire smoking symbol is one of smoke, danger, clouding, obscuring, unpleasant, stinky, addictive, destructive, ignorant, and so forth. And smoke can be noticed throughout the film and is given this type of negative association. And, and yes, I'm aware Lynch is also a smoker. Now, the gold ring on the cigarette filter can also represent the illusion and transient nature of physical gold and the material world as it relates to ignorance when seeking to fulfill happiness through the physical world. Now, I'm going to go a little afield here, but there is so much that can be intertwined and connected that is very easy to do. The gold ring and the smoke reminds me of Gilda. I like the Rita Hayworth poster for the film Gilda in the bathroom with the cigarette smoke and the line, there never was a woman like Gilda, perhaps to suggest an illusion. The smoke coming from the cigarette can be imagined as a symbol used throughout the film to suggest aspects of negativity like danger and unclear vision. And the name Gilda can be suggestive of gold gilding, which is a thin layer of gold applied to another less expensive material, 
to give an appearance of gold, and in a sense, disguise what is underneath. Lynch may have Laura Harris' character, character choose the name Rita instead of Gilda to symbolically conceal the darker aspect of her character that is associated with Hollywood illusion, illusion as described in Eastern philosophical concepts. Hollywood symbolizing material world desire where illusions are created. Initially, Laura, as Rita, appears friendly and safe, but later as Camilla, is cruel and uncaring. Uh, this might be more related to Gilda. Now, I believe Lynch uses names to reinforce the meaning of the characters, and I like that Camilla in Spanish can refer to a medical stretcher or wheeled gurney. The image of an emergency with a sick or injured person, or even perhaps a corpse, contained on a stretcher being wheeled around and unable to walk on their own, fits nicely with this level of interpretation. And the idea of laying asleep or unconscious and consciously unaware of the inner subconscious mind can be another artistic metaphor that the Spanish gurney connection might symbolize and even relate further to the beginning of the film where the camera falls into the red pillow and darkness. Now to the other way appearances can be intended. The first appearance comes at the end of what is referred to as the chain call. A call I associate with the call of desire. Now this gets difficult to explain in words because so much is intertwined and connected, but I will give it a shot. And I consider Rita and Camilla as a, their character to represent physical desire or desire. And uh, as I described previously, it can help to imagine the film as representing a mental landscape in which all of the characters are interacting within a single mind, with Rita Camilla representing a symbol of desire, which has returned to the unattended and absent mind, represented perhaps by Aunt Ruth. And again, I am referring to the idea of what the Buddhists call right mindfulness as expressed in meditation. Here we see an unknown desire sneak into an absent-minded woman's apartment, or an apartment within the mind, who is not at home, so to speak, as I mentioned in, as an artistic expression. And the desire I am talking about is not a specific desire, but rather the concept of any desire residing within, within the mind, and is thus part of the mind. This desire begins to take hold. And the mind, as having previously experienced other cycles of desire and suffering, subconsciously may express a sense of foreboding that is not recognized or fully understood, as seen at Dan and Herb as they uh, interact at Winkies, in which Dan describes past two similar terrible frightening dreams. But ignorance still allows the desire to force the mind to reach down into the subconscious and accept and embrace the next desire. The dark power of desire is never truly satisfied, and we see this portrayed as the powerful evil-looking evil Luigi Castiglione again spits out the finest espresso in the world, and again never to be satisfied. What was it last time? Okay, let's try the next one. He's not gonna like it. We'll see. Now, an inner subconscious mental communication takes place as we follow the process along Mr. Roke's organic earpiece that might suggest something like a neuron in the mind. The back of head man, as he is identified in the credits, then says same suggesting a repeating process as he calls down to a dark corner that can represent a dark corner of the mind with the disconnected wall phone and yellow walls and a harsh fluorescent lamp with an organic flexible neck again artistically might suggest a neuron and the hairy arm man as he is identified in the credits continues the process calling the phone next to the red lampshade as it rings and we hear the ringing sound grow and carries over into Betty's arrival at the airport. The ringing into the next scene 
is a device to connect the two seemingly disconnected scenes. This can now be connected and interpreted to mean that Betty is the missing girl that Mr. Roke spoke of and as a representation of actions occurring within the mind. And Betty, or the girl, has been found, ignorantly from a meditative point of view, responding to the call of desire. Betty appears to represent the sweet and innocent expectation of happiness that is following a dream desire. This can be interpreted as one part of a connecting sequence of steps in an abstract artistic representation of a non-physical mental dissension, if you will, of the mind willingly and ignorantly entering into another cycle of desire that will lead to suffering. Visually including signs within the frame can be intended to be meaningful to the theme. Things like do not enter, red lights, stop signs, no smoking can add another dimension that is easily overlooked but are intentionally included within the frame. Here the red do not enter symbol appears to enter Betty's head and then momentarily remains on screen as Betty and Irene exit the frame and can be suggestive as part of a film language. They are also shown exiting out of a square shape that can add further artistic suggestion as other box symbols are used throughout the film. And note that airport arrivals are on the first floor with baggage and not on the second floor as shown here in the film. Having the characters descend here, effortlessly riding on the escalator, can be a symbolic depiction of going on a downward path, and a similar symbol as Dan descends behind Winkies. The word dream is a synonym for desire. A desire or dream of becoming an actress can be symbolic of material desire. And in the Buddhist philosophy, seeking happiness by material desire could be imagined as being unaware or barely conscious. Dreaming of finding material happiness instead of being aware and awake to inner spiritual happiness and needs. Being half asleep. One dream cycle ending and another beginning. As a dream. As a desire. Perhaps like being thrown out of bed and then falling back to sleep to return to a dream desire and darkness and unenlightened state. A second time the red lamp appears is as Diane is masturbating in her dark apartment at Sierra Bonita. It is possible to consider how this might relate to the earlier chain call that can be interpreted as an artistic expression of an intermental communication occurring within the subconscious of an unenlightened mind. Well, at least this is from the meditative perspective that this level of interpretation is attempting to describe. Let's back up a bit to where Diane is watching Adam direct the kissing scene. Now the symbol of desire, as represented by Camilla, seems more representative of the suffering aspect as Camilla, with eyes open, looks to Diane, and we hear Adam command, kill the lights, and the scene fades to black and darkness, and we hear Camilla say, don't be mad, and Diane angrily slams the door shut on her. Note how the director, Adam, says, kill the lights, and the scene fades to black, but then cuts to a close-up of Diane's face, which then also fades to black. This sequence can be interpreted to depict the mind taking a direction to embrace self-centered physical desire that leads to the darkness of negative emotional suffering. We hear Diane alone and crying as the camera pans from the doorway to her face and then downwards as she futilely attempts to escape and shut out the hard reality and the camera refocuses on the hard stone chimney a focusing element used again as the dinner party comes into focus with a drum roll leading into the resultant emotional destination. This second call to the red lampshade 
can reflect the earlier chain call when imagining them as artistically representing what is occurring within the mind. The masturbation suggests an effort to fantasize because the girl is still missing or the happiness is missing. In the first sequence with the lampshade it can be it can seem confusing and unclear but in the second case it can be seen more clearly a painful result. Now the mind has awakened to experience the suffering instead of the anticipated happiness. Diane's hand reaching down to her private parts might correspond to the hairy arm man reaching to a dark and yellowish corner with a fluorescent circle lamp and the dark corner can suggest a repressed corner of the mind. In a way, this can be imagined as two representations of a similar mental process, but presented Hello. differently. Diane? We can imagine the first chain call sequentially beginning as Rita sleeps under the table, and under the table being a term for a shady transaction, often to avoid scrutiny by a higher authority. Here, portraying how the higher surface of the mind is unaware of the deeper mental dangers awaiting. And Betty arrives, expecting to discover happiness, but ultimately is taken by her desire, in the form of Rita, to the club. And she is clubbed, so to speak, and experiences shaking distress, confusion, and emotional pain before disappearing and vanishing, being no more, to perhaps artistically illustrate symbolically how anyone might have an aspect of their own being change, die, disappear, vanish, or evolve, for better or worse, through decisions and choices in life. In the second call, we again see a symbol of desire, now as Camilla has called the same girl, Naomi Watts, who has changed and is now of different character, but willingly follows the desire to be led like a lamb to slaughter at the dinner party. The music used is the same as other scenes of desire and can provide connections with differing emotional responses from the viewer, but can be connected together into a unified understanding on symbolic levels. When imagined together, these musically connected scenes can illustrate a girl following a path that could bring her a positive inner satisfaction, but she allows herself to succumb to her own self centered physical desire that ultimately leads her into darkness and negativity, from which the mind will seek an escape, only to repeat in a never-ending cycle that the mind fails to consciously recognize. Again, remember that in the first part of the film, Betty willingly follows her desire for Rita, who leads her to the Club Silencio, where Betty experiences the emotional pain and confusion before disappearing. Then Diane awakes to a dark world of negativity and suffering. The name Diane might even suggest dying, as in the dying, just as the name Betty might suggest a bet, a bad bet, perhaps as a corpse might symbolize a dead dream or desire that remains within the mind as a previous bad and now rotting experience. Enlightenment that Lynch speaks of can clear the mind of such putrid, rotting negativity. In Betty's section, we are confused and do not know what happened. Just as in Diane's part, we are still left uncertain and confused. We may feel a need to create something of our own that is not shown in the film, our own illusion to try and resolve the experience from a physical perspective, ignoring what can be a more unified and complete symbolic portrayal of non-physical concepts, perhaps a reflection of our own inability to escape cravings, pain, and suffering in our own lives, at least as described from the Buddhist perspective. Like Betty, we, as the viewer, imagine Betty is doing good, she and we, as the participating viewer, are misled by our own preconceptions and unaware something bad is happening. It can help to try and perceive, in the most simple and literal terms, the images and sequences that can be connected together in a symbolic manner 
that can be interpreted as something closely related to David Lynch's own personal philosophy. If distilled to a kind of basic, minimal, simplistic essence of what occurs on screen, when connected to the totality of the film, the appearances of the red lampshade in the first section can be symbolically interpreted using the sound, connected sequences, and symbolism to portray an inner call of desire, initiated by Laura Herring's amnesiac character Rita from under the table. That is answered by Naomi Watts' Betty character, who follows a physical desire, Rita, to the club and experiences negative suffering as emotional pain and confusion, as too could the viewer, before Betty disappears and is gone, there no more, out of the picture. Similarly, in the second section, Naomi Watts' Diane character answers the call of desire, now more clearly depicted coming from Laura Herring's character, and follows her desire for Camilla to the dinner party and suffers the inner negative emotional pain and confusion that leads to her exiting or being gone, shown artistically as seeking to die in a smoking bed where smoke can be used throughout the film as a related symbol to a continual cycle of being unable to see clearly the path to happiness and bliss and peace. The film as a symbolic portrayal of the same dark and ugly suffering result coming at the end of careless self-centered cycles of desire that awaits behind the walls and curtains existing as deep experiential subconscious repressions within the mind. Using the word character can both suggest the characters existing within the film, played by actors, as in a typical film narrative, as well as inner spiritual character traits, which are non-physical mental aspects or characteristics that exist within each of us. In Naomi's case, initially happy, naive, and hopeful, and then changing and awakening to a dark, negative world of depression, anger, hate, and jealousy, to no longer be the same inner person. Hopefully, some of you may begin to understand what I'm attempting to describe as a journey through the film. I have sometimes described the experience as an artistic representation of the unified field of consciousness Lynch has described in which layers of understanding can be transcended through to get closer to an enlightenment or bliss an interpretation that relates wondrously to David Lynch's own philosophical views. Try considering the film from this point of view and looking for the many details that can make this an enriching experience. There is a great deal more to cover as this series will continue to reveal this perspective. Thank you very much for watching.